Hey y'all, it's Erin with Twirling Down Main Street. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not new, then welcome back. Today I am starting a series that I'm going to be doing the month of March. And I'm sure there'll be additional videos that I do in this series because there's just so much to talk about. But the series is Universal Florida Basics. It can be kind of daunting to plan a trip to Universal if you're going for the first time and you don't know anything about Universal. So my hope with this is to help you plan your trip to Universal and give you some insights. I go quite often, so I've learned a few tips and tricks and I just wanna help you have the best experience. First up is parking. So all three parks, Volcano Bay, Islands of Adventure, and Universal Studios share a parking garage. However, if you're going to Volcano Bay, you're gonna park in a different area of the parking garage but team members will direct you where to go if you're going to Volcano Bay. You will pull up to the parking ticket window. Regular parking is $26 and prime parking is $36. Prime parking just means that you might be a little closer to the security area, but I've heard people say that sometimes it's not worth it depending on just when you get there and like where you end up in a row. Um, so that's up to you whether you decide it's really not that long of a walk and then there's escalators for if you're on a different level than the main level. So we always just do regular parking. Parking is included in preferred and premier annual passes. I will do a separate video all about annual passes and what all is included with those. But just know that if you plan on going multiple days, maybe take in consideration the cost of parking if you might be cheaper for you to get an annual pass or for someone in your party to get an annual pass. So I said there's one garage, there's actually two garages, depending on when you get there, what day it is, different factors. Team members will direct you which garage to go to. They both lead to the same place. They also have different sections. So there's Spider-Man, Dr. Seuss, Jaws, King Kong, Jurassic Park, and E.T. These are all just area names of areas so you know where you're parked. Make sure you take a picture of one of the colored signs that says, you know, here's what garage you're in, here's what row you're in. Because at the end of the day, it can be kind of difficult to find your car if you don't remember where you're parked. And that has happened to me before and you're tired and just ready to go and just take the picture in the morning and it'll be so much better because you can just go back and look and be like, oh yeah, we're here. So right now, first, before you go through security, you'll go through temperature checks, which is just one of those contactless thermometers that most places have been using. And from there, you will go through security. It's kind of like airport security. You put all of your belongings in a bin and then that goes through and you go through a metal detector. Pretty simple. Just know that some days, depending on how crowded it is, there might be a line and there might be team members directing you to which security line to get in. Um, some days it's just a free for all. Make sure to always look as far as you can to the right because usually that line's the shortest. Also, if you cross your arms like this, kind of like Wakanda forever, if you have a metal watch or a smart watch or something, a metal detector is less likely to pick it up if you do this. And that's a tip that we've been told by some of the security officers as well. I do this sometimes or this works. So after you get through security, then you're gonna get on the moving walkways or you can just walk depending on how crowded it is or what you wanna do. And you will go into city walk. City Walk is Universal's kind of shopping and dining area. You don't need a ticket to get into City Walk and you'll walk straight through City Walk if you're going to the theme parks. I will do a separate video all about City Walk. Again, I told you this is going to be a ton of videos because there's so much to talk about. There's several good restaurants in City Walk and you can stop and get breakfast at Food or Donuts or Cinnamon or Starbucks on your way to the parks. But for this case, we're just going to talk about going straight to the parks. If you're going to Islands of Adventure, you're going to just keep going straight and kind of go towards the lighthouse looking structure. And if you're going to Universal Studios, you're going to turn right after all the construction walls. Uh, that's a new Universal Studios store that's going up. So depending on when you watch this video, the store might be done. But right now there's a bunch of construction walls. You'll turn right and kind of follow the construction walls and you'll see those big arches that say Universal Studios. Depending on what time you get there, if you get there before the park opens, there will be a line because they usually don't let people in before park opens. Usually it's two lines and they just kind of veer off in different directions. They will tell you if you have a park ticket already or even if you don't to just get in those lines. It doesn't matter which one you're in. I always pick the line that's moving slowest, but that's okay. If you're picking up will call tickets, usually you can kind of skip that line 
and go to the Will Call kiosks that at Universal Studios they are off to the right and there'll be kiosks where you go and like scan your QR code or whatever that you got or your confirmation number that you got when you bought your tickets online and then it'll print out your tickets for you and then there's a separate line kind of around the corner that you get to get in. But first we need to talk about tickets. There are many different types of tickets you can buy for Universal. You can buy these tickets directly from Universal or from a travel agent. If you go through a travel agent, it'll be the same price at Universal and sometimes they're good at getting deals that you might not know about. Or if you book through a travel agent, you can get some extra perks like early admission hours included with your ticket. Just make sure you're going through a reputable travel agent. Don't buy them from a booth in Kissimmee that advertises really cheap tickets because sometimes those are not reliable. There are two main types of tickets, one park per day and park to park tickets. One park per day gets you access to either Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure. Park to park gets you access to both. So you could go between Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios as many times as you want in one day and you can ride the Hogwarts Express. The only way to ride the Hogwarts Express is to have a park to park ticket. You cannot get on it if you have a one-day ticket because they scan your ticket to make sure you can get over to the other park before you even get on the Hogwarts Express. So if you have a kid that's big into Harry Potter or if you're big into Harry Potter, then I would suggest doing the park to park ticket because then you can ride the Hogwarts Express. Make sure also that you ride the Hogwarts Express both ways because it's different. Volcano Bay, which is now open for the season again, is Universal's water park and tickets can be purchased separately or as part of an annual pass. Also, sometimes they'll run promotional deals where you can add on a day at Volcano Bay for a discount. Just make sure to check the Universal website to see when they're doing those promotional deals and take advantage of that. If you're planning on visiting more than five days, I would highly suggest getting an annual pass as it will probably be cheaper than buying like six day, seven day tickets. Um, Universal doesn't even sell six or seven day tickets. So you'd have to go back and buy one day or two day to add on to your five day ticket and it gets pretty expensive. So look into getting an annual pass if you're going for more than five days. And again, I'll do another video on the types of annual passes and everything later. Make sure to check Universal's website often because they run a lot of promotional deals. Right now, I think they're doing a Florida resident deal where if you buy a day, you get three days free and they're doing deals like that all the time. So make sure you check the Universal website often to take advantage of those deals that they run. I mentioned early park admission earlier. That is where you get into the park one hour earlier than regular guests. Actually, everybody can get into the park, but you just get to go further than the little main area. So if the park opens at nine and early admission is at eight, everybody can get in at eight, but they will be checking either to see if you have an annual pass or your hotel ticket and you'll be able to get further into the park than other people. Only certain things are open during early park admission. You can check Universal's website to see it changes day to day. Usually the Harry Potter rides are open for early admission and usually like sometimes Despicable Me or at Islands of Adventure, the Hulk will be open as well. But you can check the Universal website to see which parks are offering early admission. Sometimes they both offer it on the same day. Sometimes it's just one park offering it. But again, all that can be found on the Universal website. So who gets early park admission? If you're staying at a Universal hotel, you'll get early park admission. You just show your room key and that lets you in. Annual pass holders also can get early admission depending on the pass they have and what day it is. All this kind of changes. Some passes have blockout dates on early admission and sometimes they let all the pass holders in early because of like pass holder appreciation days or something. So make sure you check the pass holder Universal website, which I will link down below as well so that you can see what days, what passes have early admission. To actually get through the turnstiles, you will need your park ticket. And usually they will ask you to scan your fingerprint. If you don't wanna do that right now because of everything going on with COVID, then you can ask to show your ID instead and they won't make you scan your fingerprint. Go ahead and have your ID out anyway, even if you are planning on scanning your fingerprint, because sometimes when you first scan in with that new pass or with your new tickets that you just bought, they'll ask to see your ID as well. So it's always just a good idea to have your ID out so you're not having to dig through to try to find that and holding your line up. Make sure that everybody has their passes and their IDs when you get into the line. Children won't need an ID, um, but if you're an adult, you'll need an ID. All right, so that gets you into the park. Be looking next week for my video where I go through all of the rides that are available at Universal Studios and for more videos coming out later this month. Thank y'all so much for watching. Wear your mask, wash your hands, be safe, and we'll see you later.